Hey guys, Alberto Big Boost here and today's episode I'm gonna show you guys how to prep and hopefully in time I will be able to assemble my BMW M52 engine which I'm gonna be doing a 3 liter stroker build on this. I'm pretty much done cleaning the engine. What I'm doing right now is I am burning off or evaporating the water or humidity on the block um, so I can get it ready for paint. I just brushed up everything from the top. Also the front is also brushed down. I would show you guys how to do this, but obviously my method of cleaning the engine are not machine shop standard. So I will not show how I did this to avoid discussion on the comments below. What I will show you is what happens when I apply some heat to the block. This is what you want the surface of the block to look like before applying paint. The next step will be to mask off any part that I don't want painted. That will be the top and the front and then the oil filter housing inlet thing. I like using blue painter's tape since this masking tape has less adhesive than the regular one. It's a lot nicer when you remove it. It doesn't leave glue behind the block which you have to clean up and potentially damage the paint after. I think as you guys may hear, this neighborhood is like the loudest neighborhood ever. Like, it's very difficult to film with good audio because there's passing cars, working trucks, or music somewhere from UCF. <laughs> A lot of things going on. And here's a little trick that I do this to get it all super neat. Go over all the edge and just rub on the edges like you like marking it. And then this will make it easier to cut it in the right shape. Same thing on the back side. When I get it all the edge pronounced. Now you can use a screwdriver, it could be Phillips or flathead. I'm actually going to be using the round part of the shaft instead of the sharp edge. And you'll see what it does now. Just go over the edge like this. And it will cut the tape in the perfect shape of the surface that you're, cutting, you're trying to mask. Check this out. Oh wait, I didn't get it here. And to make sure to press firmly against the block. If not, it will just not cut it. This is what the cut surface looks like with just the screwdriver. Very handy to do. It's perfect edge so you can get, make sure you get really good professional results when you're painting the block. This is what the block looks like now, all trained. The front is set. Then I got the little thing for the oil pump. This side is also trimmed and now it's ready for paint. I first try to get all the edges. It's a light, far away mist of spray. And then you just fan it all over just very lightly. Now 
Then you wait for that first coat to at least dry for like a minute. After that, I tilt the engine a little bit and paint it the parts that you couldn't paint from the top so you can paint it from the bottom. That way you have no spots that are left unpainted. Now I'm doing the second coat, which is a heavier coat. And now we let it dry. Guys, uh, I was trying to finish this job by today so I could provide a daily video. But uh, when I went to go pick up the head, while I was waiting for the engine to dry, they called me from the machine shop that the head was finally ready to pick up. So I went to get it, pick it up and then I forgot that that involves getting Orlando downtown traffic at the worst time. And then I got hungry. <laughs> And then I realized that I have to go buy another drill after I got back here because the drill that I have finally died. So I have to go to Harbor Freight and pick up a new drill so I can hone the cylinders, which is the next step. I am super happy with how the engine color turned out. It's like a satin black. I thought it was gonna be glossy black. And it looks like factory, but even better. So you basically attach it to the drill like this and then it works like this. Put it on the cylinder and move it up and down which I'll show you guys the right technique to use this thing. First, you want to use some WD-40 and spray down the cylinder. And it's going to do all of them so they're all nice and wet for now. Then I'm also gonna apply some to the tool. Did you even get it? I'm gonna try this again on cylinder number two. So I'll show you guys how to use a honing tool. You guys see what I did there? So I'm using the tool, I'm going at slow speed up and down. So it makes a crisscross pattern with the lines. You can see I haven't cleaned the WD-40 so the lines are more exaggerated with the um, oil. But once I clean it up, you'll see nice smooth crisscross lines on this. In order to clean up the cylinders, I will now use automatic transmission fluid and a rag to clean up the debris. So, I don't know if you guys know about this, but it's very popular with the mechanics. Um, you use this as really good detergent to clean machine parts, especially for cylinder honing. You want to take all the fine dust you can get from it. This will also prep the surface better for rings and provide a better breaking period. The next step on the build 
will be to follow the rings to the proper gap. Um, after doing some math and checking a few of the specifications, the factory gap spec for the 84 millimeter on this BMW engine will be 15, no wait, will be 13 and 14. So it will be 13 on the upper ring, 14 on the bottom ring. Since again, I'm gonna be going turbo, I'm gonna go ahead two steps up, so I'm gonna do 15. And then instead of doing 16, I wanna relieve more pressure, so I'm gonna go 70 on the secondary ring. So my first ring will be two sizes bigger, my second ring will be three sizes bigger. That way I run the chance of the heat, of the piston ring closing on me from heat and causing the piston to break. So I'm trying to rule one of the possibilities out with that. The second one is to run less timing to prevent detonation. So by doing those two things, I should be okay with this next build. I'll take my first ring. Should have a marking for the top part, it's right here. Then I'm gonna put the ring. It's a little down, almost at the top, not at the very top. And then you're gonna go with the piston and you push it down. I like doing it so this part of the piston will be flush with the engine so I can act as a guide to know if it's perfectly straight. And now the ring is seated all the way down. You don't want to do it right on the edge because some cylinders, the edge is actually bigger than the rest of the cylinder. So if you take the measurement up here, you will have an inaccurate reading and it will compress more midway through or halfway through the cylinder. So you want to take it all the way down here so you get an accurate reading. All right now, I'm gonna start with my filler gauge and I think it should be between 12 or 13, the way the ring is cut factory. This is with a 12. It's very snug, let me see the 13 will go through. You don't wanna force it, if it doesn't go in, it doesn't go in. There's two of this, it's really hard with the gloves. So we got 13. So it's like if I were to use this with a factory gap, I wouldn't have to grind them, but I will be grinding this ring so I can file them to the right size. I will now use my piston ring grinder, which I set up backwards. I gotta have to like put it the other way. It's very difficult trying to be resourceful so you can keep doing the job while working in the house. So. I don't have all the equipment that I had back in the shop, so I'm trying to manage to keep doing the work with the tools and equipment that I have in the garage. So obviously I don't have a table, so I'm actually using my old engine as a table. This is what I end up working. I have the engine plug there, so I put the lid for my container, put some chop towels, and I'm using the piston ring grinder on top of that. All right, let's try this again. I'll take my ring, make sure the top is facing the right way. Where, there it is. Then you have this two thingies right here. What you want to do, you want to press the ring against that. And then with your fingers, make sure you press so the piston ring is flush with the disc. Then after you do that, then you're going to slowly spin this while keeping pressure. And it will grind down the ring and make the gap bigger. Then make sure you are cutting straight. You'll still start like making like little lines on this, so it's grinding. I found out that doing it from the other side with my current table conditions is a lot easier. A little harder to keep it straight, but I'm able to just grind it a lot more effortless this way. I've got all of the piston rings gap for the first ring. Now I need to move on to the second ring. The secondary ring, you can tell normally it's black and it has a little groove on the bottom that's for scraping the oil. Pro tip, on the secondary rings, they grind down a lot faster 
than the top rings. Since these are not chrome plated, you gotta be very, very, very careful when grinding this down because you can over grind them and you have too big, you have too big of a gap and then you will have blow eye. So be very careful and grind this with a lot more patience than the top ring.